Autolite and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. William Powell in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a story based on fact, the dramatic report of a man's desperate race for freedom, with names and places changed in order to protect the lives of three people. The story is called The Man Who Cried Wolf. Our star, Mr. William Powell. Okay, Mr. Wilcox, you're all set. Thanks, Sam. My complete Autolite electrical system is tuned to a T, eh? Yes, sir. The coil, distributor, starting motor, generator, spark plugs, battery, and all the other parts are working together like a perfect team. And that means smooth and economical performance. You know, that electrical system has a big job. It goes to work the instant you press the starter button and continues to function every second your car is in motion. In addition, it works for you every time you blow your horn, turn on your lights, radio, heater, and electric windshield wiper. Yep. And that's why it pays to keep the electrical system really running right. You bet. So, friends, have your car's electrical system periodically and expertly checked at your car dealer's or authorized Autolite service station. You can locate your nearest Autolite service station through the classified section of the phone book under Automobile Electrical Service or by calling Western Union by number and asking for Operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. William Powell is appearing by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor picture The Naked Spur, starring James Stewart, Janet Lee, and Robert Ryan. And now, Autolite presents The Man Who Cried Wolf, starring Mr. William Powell, hoping once again to keep you in suspense. If you knew who I am, if one day you would pass me on the street and stop and point your finger at me and say, this story happened to you, then I would be a dead man. And therefore I cannot tell you too much about myself, neither what I look like nor where I am. A few things you may know, which will alter nothing. I am Russian. I was once a member of the Communist Party. And until recently, I was attached to the Russian embassy in Mexico City, a cipher clerk. Three years of it, attached to the embassy in a strange new land. Here, a thing needs emphasis. The people, the Mexican people, they worked, they sang, they laughed, they had families, cried, played, hoped, loved. Like Russian people, but with a difference. They did these things when and how and where they wanted to, not by directives. The word is freedom. It took me three years to know its meaning. For this, I was almost murdered. To you, my name is Meros Leko. It started at nine o'clock in the morning. When I was walking toward the cipher room in the embassy... Comrade Leko, if you please, comrade. Can you uh, spare me a moment? Of course. In here, please. My office. Uh, sit down, sit down. Thank you. And uh, how is your wife, Lilia? And the little one, uh, his name... Um, Ivan. Ivan. Uh, he must be, let me see, three months. Huh. Three months. Amazing. I believe Ivan recognizes me, Comrade Zapakin. I, I, I have heard of other children his age who travel in airplanes. Uh, bottles and equipment to make formula, these things are provided. Uh, I don't... Of course uh... you do. Travel in airplanes. Ivan will do it. Therefore you, therefore your wife. I have been recalled. I have suggested it to the ambassador. The ambassador to Moscow. Approved. Moscow to the ambassador, etc. What? Why? Because I suggested it to the ambassador. I see. Of course you do. However, you should know this. I have written a letter which will precede you by diplomatic pouch. As your superior, my impressions of you. The gist of it you must know. Uh, no, no, I don't. You will be missed here in Mexico. I've told them that. Thank you. By many friends, Mexicans. 
Americans whom you have met through your Mexican friends. Then I am being recalled as a poor security risk? Exactly. Now, your key to the cipher room. Comrade... There's the key. Oh, yes. I have it here. To detach it will... Ah. Zapotin speaking. Yes, comrade. Oh, yes, one moment. Uh, Comrade Leko, if you please wait for me in the corridor. Of course. Uh, Yes, comrade. Yes, ambassador. I have told him. There is no melodrama attached to it. Merely a simple truth. To be sent back to Moscow is a bad security risk. Prison... Work camp in Siberia, death. Therefore, do a thing. Pursue a plan. Ensure my living. Do not wait for Zapotin. Back to the cipher room. Use the key. Steal. Certain papers. Documents. For the occasion of remaining alive. Uh, This one. And this. Secret documents to buy my own security. Papers dog-eared for the purpose stay alive. And these. This. Comrade Leko. And put them into my coat pocket. Inside. Comrade. A moment, comrade. Open. I told you to wait. But I had duties here in the cipher room. You are relieved of them. I told you this. No. Merely that I'm returning to Moscow. Tomorrow. Yes. The key, comrade. Of course. You will go immediately to your house. You will inform your wife. You will pack. You will get your child ready. And you will be delivered to Moscow. Under escort, comrade. Now, good day. Lilia. Lilia. I was but in the kitchen doing the things of the morning, and... Meros. What? It is morning, and you are not at the embassy. You are here. Why? The child, Lilia. Where? He has been fed. He is bathed, and he sleeps now. Lilia. There is cold in your hands. Close. I will warn you. Lilia. Why? Say to me why you are of illness. Yes, that's it. An old illness. Then we will call a doctor. We will return. No, Lilia. But this chill in you that I cannot warm. Fear. Fear of death. To run in streets blazing with sun and still to be cold. What cure for that, Lilia? Death. To begin tomorrow. For you. For me. And for the child. I don't know what there will be for the child. Your lips for death. I'm being recalled, Lilia. Why? Why? You have worked hard for them. And I have talked to people here. And I have sat in sunlight and laughed with them. And somewhere in darkness it was observed and reported. There is until tomorrow. And there is time for flight. I will make ready the child. No. If we run, they will find a quicker way to kill us. I have a plan, Leah. For a year now I've had this plan. And it will keep you from death? Listen to me. I've stolen certain papers from the cipher room. Documents of theirs that can buy back our life. I have them here in my coat. From whom will they buy our life, Meadows? Who will now want... Will you listen to me? You are to take them. Here, take them. Yes, Meadows. You put them in a briefcase. And then you take the boy and dress him mm-hmm. and go to the Plaza Zucalo. And the bench there near the, near the great fountain. Yes. And you are there so the child will have son if anyone asks... And you'll keep the briefcase hidden until I come to you. You understand, Lydia? Yes. And then quickly, get ready. Yes, sir. Go, Lydia, quick. <laughs> oh, Senor Cardoza. <laughs> you give me surprise, Senor Leco. It was not you I expected to see this hour. Ah, but I'm glad to see you. Uh, please come in. <laughs> The day has of beauty, and in the streets there is fiesta. And I thought to me, 
The señora Leco would care for fiesta, she and the pequeño. Ay, the señora and the pequeño, muy buenos días to you both. Señor Cardoso. Uh, uh, you'd, you'd better take the child and go, Lilia. There's not much time. Yes, Meros. But, señor, I've come for you and the little one to the fiesta. Lilia. I'm sorry, señor Cardoso. Perhaps another time. Come to us soon, Meros. Another time, senor, when I will not disturb, I too will go. No, no, uh, uh, wait. Yes? Uh, three years we've known each other now. Neighbors, you've done kindnesses for us. Are you also my friend, Cardozas? But this is a question of ridiculous. That I am your friend? I, who have held the pequeño Ivan in my hands? Who have babysit for him? Who have... Listen to me. Uh, j just listen. Uh. I've come across certain documents. They prove a conspiracy exists between members of your government and mine. These papers can buy back my life. I have only until tomorrow to sell. Oh, I have read of such grotesque things. But... Where do I buy back my life, Cardosis? And Lias and Ivans. You were a lawyer and a Mexican. Where do I trade? Uh, it is to ponder... A moment. Uh, if I were not a poor lawyer, if I were an editor, perhaps, of a great newspaper, and there was a week's headlines to be had for so little price. Oh, pardon how, how frightful I am. I did not mean that Editor. You... Newspaper. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, Bill gracias, Cardosis. Ten thousand thanks for our lives. Yes. What do you wish of me? <clears throat> I am Meros Leko. I uh... call the clerk of the Russian embassy. I remember you well, Senor Leko, from another time. I have a story for you with documents. Top secret. So? The documents prove that there's a conspiracy between certain members of your government with mine. I've stolen them from my embassy. They're yours, if you want. And the price, senor? I told you. My life, my wife's, my three-month-old child, our lives. Very cheap, senor. Bargain rates. You had the courage to steal secret papers of the Soviet? You, a Russian citizen, and this is what you want? Not money? I have been recalled to the Soviet. There'll be a plane for us tomorrow morning. An escort. And after that... Where are the papers? My wife has them. She's waiting for me on a bench in the Plaza Zucaro. The boy's with her. I'll go to her. Tell her that you'll take them. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> you people. Intrigue, drama, the promises of violence and of revelations and the easy words on your mouths... Life, <laughs> death, it's like the last time you came to see me, huh, Senor Leco? What? Not a year ago, Senor Leco, you were here. And you then had another thing to sell. Listen to me. The thing of Dr. Diego, remember? Professor of electronics in the University of Mexico. He too was in conspiracy, you told me then. And it was false, a savage lie. You and your government wished only to relieve us of his brains. To get him out of your evil way. To destroy him and slowly us. It was a lie, I admit it. I had orders to do that. But this... <laughs> but this... This is of a fable, senor. Of the boy who cried wolf once too often. And now it is a man who has cried wolf. Please. You have to believe. Not I, senor. I have more wisdom of you now. Run. Run into the streets. Cry wolf to the masks of fiesta. Perhaps one of them will believe, but not I. Go! Oh, cry wolf! They'll kill me. Lilia, the boy. <laughs> Adios, senor. is bringing you Mr. William Powell in The Man Who Cried Wolf. 
Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Say, uh, Sam, did you know that 41 years ago, Autolite designed the first two-unit, six-volt automotive electrical system used as original equipment? Sure. And Autolite electrical systems have been used as original equipment on leading makes of our finest cars, tracks, tractors, and boats ever since. Hey, eh, Mr. Wilcox? They sure have, Sam. And all the units which make up the world-famous Autolite electrical system, including the coil, distributor, generator, starting motor, spark plugs voltage regulator and battery are related by Autolite engineering design and manufacturing skill to give the finest performance money can buy. Every unit, as well as the component parts that go to make up every unit, are designed to fit and work as a family team. So be sure. Insist on Autolite original service parts for your Autolite equipped car. Right, Sam, because then you're sure of getting the best. Friends, you'll find it pays to keep the Autolite electrical system of your car a family system. Insist on Autolite original service parts. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. William Powell in Elliot Lewis's production of The Man Who Cried Wolf, a story well calculated to keep you in suspense. These are the things which happen to a man who might be killed. Walk a street. Glance backward. Stop. That man in back of you, why did he stop too? So turn a corner and there's a place, a building, a place you've been looking for. The Department of Justice. And go into it. Find a man, a small man, a neat and dapper and meticulous and methodical and shattering man. Leko, Meros Leko, the name I know, I am sure of it. Uh, pardon me. Please, senor. See, si? I have documents. Uh, forgive me, you have a story, but no documents. You say your wife has documents, but you do not. Uh, pardon me. Uh, Leko, Leko, huh? Meros Leko, ah, ah, see, si. Meros Leko. Uh, the Department of Justice has a dossier on you. I was sure of it. In March 1952, you reported that a certain Dr. Diego of the university erroneously reported, I must say. It was a lie, then. I was under orders to report. And today, no lies, senor? What I have been telling you is the truth. My life is in danger. And you wish protection? Yes. For me, for my wife, for my child. Senor. Yes, you are a Russian national of the embassy. Has your embassy been informed of this thing that is about to happen to your life? Don't you understand? Those are the people who want to kill me. I understand only that once you endeavor to involve my government in an unpleasantness with your lies. However... The Russian embassy, please. Ma. Leave him. Get away from him. Flight from a cone phone call to death. Mine. And for a woman who sits in the plaza near a fountain and waits. And for a child whose fingers play with drifting golden feathers of sunlight. And try not to run. Through a long corridor of marble and columns. And quick, blurred faces. And of voices. And their feet murmuring through the tongues of terror and great doors of metal and glass open onto a pavilion of steps closer now to the images of fiesta to the masks of fiesta to the women and the music and the spinning scarlets and golds and green of fiesta and across the street is a lifetime away and a cry of laughter and small fright you've made a child, a young boy sprawl against confetti pavement and take the precious time to help him to his feet and say you're sorry a few steps to another building, to a shuttered door and beat on it. Because there is help there. 
taken refuge in Senor Cardozas, the office of Senor Cardozas. Cardozas! Cardozas! Senor Leco. Let me in. Vengo, usted, amigo, come in. Always I close my office for fiesta. He wouldn't listen to me, Cardozas. He wouldn't believe me. Huh? Oh, the man of the newspaper. Someone has to believe me, Cardozas. Someone has to see those documents. Uh, perhaps. What? A friend to me in the secret police. I could say to him of you, and perhaps he... But maybe... You have no wish of secret police, Senor Leco. Get to him. Tell him. I have but to phone to him. He's a friend from student days. He will meet us. To your health, Meros. Drink, drink, amigo. Where is your friend? He will meet us here in good time. Drink. Meros. Yes? Are you not worried about your wife, about the pequeño? Uh, they will be all right. Yes, I'm sure of it. That man who came through the door. Uh, Pepe, aquí. Siéntate, Pepe. Uh, amigo Pepe, amigo Meros. Buenos dias. How do you do? You are in trouble, senor? Yes. What trouble? Pepe, may I call you that? Si. I have stolen some documents from the Russian embassy. Where are they, senor? Uh, my wife has them. And where is your wife? She's waiting for me. When you hear my story, if you believe me... No one believes him, Pepe. The story, senor... Tomorrow, I'm to be sent back to Russia. I have stolen documents to prevent this. But that is the part that is difficult for authorities to understand, Pepe. My friend Meros talks of documents and has no documents. See, si, this I notice. To give them to my wife and separate from her is part of a plan. By this time, surely the theft of the documents has been discovered. By this time, the embassy looks for me. If they catch me, they cannot harm me. See, si, the blackmail of the documents... Do you believe my story? Senor, I wish to tell you something. Do you believe me? To us of the police, the names of all members of your embassy is known. Yours. I will not conceal from you the fact that I know of the tricks you played with us last year. The matter of a professor at the university. It's the truth. What I tell you is the truth. Believe him, Pepe. Why should I believe you, senor? Because it is the truth. See, I saw his wife, Lilia, leave. I will take you to her. I do not wish to be made a fool of. I will give you the papers. Believe him, Pepe. I have a car outside. We will go to your wife. Turn here. My wife waits for me at the Plaza Zucalo. And she will wait? With my son. Yes, pequeño Pepe, three months. Senor? Yes. Your wife is Russian also? Yes. And a member of the party? Yes. How can you be sure she did not return to the embassy, deliver back the papers, and when you arrive at the plaza, a trap? Oh. Funny? Very. The plaza, senor. Where is your wife? Oh, slowly. Ah, yes. Yes, there she is. By the fountain where I told her to be. With the child. See. Si. Do not look at me so, Cardozas. The police motions to stop the car, so I must stop. Uh, a procession. We can't get to the other side anyhow. We'll have to wait. Idiots. <laughs> a parade. Such a solemn parade. How ridiculous. And they bow their heads. You're communists. Both of you. Spies. Trick me. Hey, you won't get away. I'll show you. Hold him. They 
these people. People, listen to me. You are fools. Listen. You are being exploited by your ignorance. Meros, they'll kill all of us. Meros. Exploited. And that's the way it ended. The crowd ended it. The crowd I enraged with lies. The old lies. Communist lies. The lies I had once lived. They enveloped us. They turned over the car. And the last thing I saw, Gadosis and Pepe. Communists who tricked me. The terror on their faces. The last thing I saw. Oh, Lilia. Are you all right? Yes. And Ivan? At home. Home? Where? At another place. Meros, you are released. I will take you there. And the papers, the documents. The police. They believe you. Yes. Oh, yes. We are free, Meros. Not to return to Russia. A new homeland. That is freedom. And no fear. Freedom. Where we are now, we are not known. And it is freedom where we are. And there are hopes, and there is love. And I am alive. But if one day you would pass me on the street and stop and point your finger at me and say, this story happened to you, then I would be a dead man. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. William Powell. This is Harlow Wilcox again, speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. That's why, during these early months of 53, the Autolite family joins together in saluting the leading car manufacturers who install Autolite products as original equipment. Our Autolite family is made up of the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and in still other Autolite plants in many foreign countries. Our family also includes more than 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite, as well as 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our Autolite family will salute the National Safety Council and its accident prevention work on the next Autolite Suspense television program. If you live in a television area, check the day and time of suspense so that you'll be sure to see this program. Next week, a true story. The tragic history of the most famous of all early California bandits. The story is called... The Love and Death of Joaquin Murrieta. Our star, Mr. Victor Mature. That's next week on Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morrowick and conducted by Lud Gluskin. The Man Who Cried Wolf was written for Suspense by Morton Fine and David Friedkin from research gathered by Larry Thor. In tonight's story, Lillian Byup was heard as Lilia. Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Jack Crucian, Steve Roberts, Byron Kane, and John Daner. And remember, next week, Mr. Victor Mature as Joaquin Murrieta. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>